when the F-35B Lightning II fifth-generation stealth fighter was unveiled to the public, many of us recognized its significant technological advancement. Its strong pivoting engine nozzle and shaft-driven lift fan system were very important. How was it possible for Lockheed Martin to make this plane? The F-35BE, in addition to its invisibility, is the first fighter jet in history to incorporate a display on the pilot's helmet. Recognized. The cameras in the HMD's distributed aperture system allow the pilot to see through the plane. Lockheed Martin first manufactured the F-35B Lightning II in Fort Worth, Texas, in 2006. Pratt and Whitney's F-135 engine powers this version, which can take off and land vertically. The body's complex stealth technology allows it to perform a variety of tasks. It was taken over by the U.S. Marine Corps in 2015. The engine of the F-35B is another thing that makes it very powerful. Pratt & Whitney manufactured the F-135 engine that powers this plane. It has 40,000 pounds of thrust, which is the best performance and reliability of any aircraft. It also has a single engine control system that makes it easier to run. Two engines are more complicated than one. This high-tech engine using a unique propulsion system facilitates the F-35B's fast takeoff and vertical landing. This has a lift fan, a drive shaft, and a swivel module that lets it push up and down. Its power and low visibility make it one of the most impressive fifth-generation features of the F-35B. Rolls-Royce designed the lift fan system for the F-35B, which has a two-stage fan that rotates anti-clockwise and is controlled by a clutch from the main F-135 engine through a drive shaft. When you engage Stavel, the clutch transfers power from the main engine to the lift fan. This can push the plane down by up to 20,000 pounds. At the same time, the back nozzle swivels downward, adding another 18,000 pounds of power. The lift fan and engine installation are very important to the F-35B Stavel ability. They offer a unique engineering and air power option that planes like the AV-8B Harrier II had not had before. We've had the chance to see many weapon loading events, as well as the removal and installation of an engine, a lift fan, and a power module. I would say that these big engineering tasks are much easier to do on land than at sea, where there is a lot of noise, the ship is moving, and other things that can make things difficult. That means it comes with its own problems. We need to test a plane like the F-35B in a variety of ways, including different climates. The McKinley Climatic Laboratory at Eglin Air Force Base subjected the F-35B to numerous rigorous weather tests. When the tests were over in 2015, they put the F-35B through a lot of bad weather such as temperature changes from 140 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, rain, high humidity, ice, snow, and wind. Engineers were able to see how well the plane worked in a variety of situations by running the engines, cycling the doors to the weapon bay, and moving it around on the ground. These tests confirmed the F-35B's endurance, readiness, and ability to perform well in a range of weather conditions aligning with global operating standards. We have full control over the conditions we are putting the F-35 through in this chamber. For decades, Kinley Lab has seen nearly every plane in the Western world. For about 40 years, the F-35 has been different, and putting an airplane on a stand 12 feet high so it could float, take off vertically, or fly with full afterburners was something no one had thought of or seen before the F-35. After testing the F-35B in every way possible, we said it was ready to fly. With its short takeoff and vertical landing, the F-35B has a clear military edge thanks to modern engineering. When the plane takes off from a short runway, the engine engages a lock that tilts the rear nozzle downward, creating vertical lift. In vertical landing mode, the plane slows down to a hover using thrust from the downward deflecting rear nozzle and lift fan to land in small spaces. With this advanced propulsion system, the F-35B can fly from short runways, remote facilities and ships that can take off and land, giving the military more task options and strategic flexibility. 
The Royal Navy employs a ski jump to facilitate the takeoff of Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft ships. These carriers use a simple ski jump setup for STOL F-35B flights. The plane takes off from the ship's deck using forward propulsion and the ski jumps upward curve that shortens the runway. In addition to making takeoff safer, the ski jump increases the plane's weight and fuel carrying capability. Because they have a ski jump for takeoff and landing, aircraft carriers can do strong air operations even when they don't have standard catapults and arresting gear. For rolling landings on F-35Bs, the Royal Navy often uses the lift fan device. Even though it's easier to land an F-35B than an old Harrier II, you still need to get good training. The U.S. Marine Corps subjects F-35B pilots to extensive training, including vertical landings on market amphibious attack ship decks. This means learning how to hover using the plane's short takeoff and vertical landing features. To simulate real-life strict flying patterns, trainees work on precise throttle control and tight coordination of forward and vertical thrust, usually at night or when it's hard to see. Pilots can land on amphibious assault ships safely and properly if they get enough training, which is important for carrier-based operations to run smoothly. Lockheed Martin made the F-35B to replace the AV-8B Harrier II, which was getting old. McDonnell Douglas and British Aerospace manufactured the AV-8B Harrier II, a second-generation vertical short takeoff and landing aircraft. Its prototype flew for the first time in 1978, with a bigger composite wing, more fuel, and better handling. The airframe is better than the first Harrier GR1 design. A Rolls-Royce Pegasus engine makes almost 23,000 pounds of power. When it joined the USMC in 1985, the Harrier II quickly proved to be a useful multi-role weapon in a range of combat situations. It was a precursor to the F-35B. Land an AV-8B Harrier II vertically, the pilot must be highly skilled and knowledgeable about how airplanes work. As the Harrier II gets closer to the landing zone, the operator slows down and changes the plane's flight from wings to jets. The pilot moves the thrust vectoring nozzles on the plane to guide the engine force downward. This keeps the plane stable in a hover over the landing area. To stay in a hover, you need to be able to make precise adjustments to the engine and flight controls, as well as be able to account for changes in wind speed and drift. The landing gear on the AV-8B absorbs the force of the descent, and the plane rests on the deck, making a perfect vertical touchdown. It shows off the AV-8B's V-Stole ability, which was previously unheard of and is important for use on ships other than carriers. The Marine Medium Tilt Rotor Squadron's crews are usually busy on amphibious attack ships. As part of their day's work, they might carefully put together lanyards for the heat shields that protect the AV-8B Harrier II engines in their squad from very hot weather. At the same time, a group of experts fix the electrical problems on the plane's wing panels, which is very important for the flying surface to work properly. At the same time, the team takes steps to prevent corrosion, giving special attention to the jam nuts on the Harrier II's bomb rack. These planes can only stay in great shape and perform their air support tasks if they receive regular maintenance. NASA and other space agencies also use thrust vectoring in their rockets. Engineers have extensively worked on NASA's new space launch system on the famous B-2 test stand at NASA's Stennis Space Center near Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, Rocket Corps stage operators tested the stage's thrust vector control system. The test proved that the control system and the hydraulics that accompany it work. To do this, we gimbaled the stage's four RS-25 engines in the same way that they need to move in flight to guide the rocket and keep it on the right path. Three of the four RS-25 engines in the space launch system use thrust vectoring. These engines gimbal or rotate to skew the direction of exhaust flow, resulting in offset thrust. This offset generates a rotating torque day that modifies the rocket's direction and path during flight, which is crucial for course correction and overall maneuverability. SpaceX's vertical landing Falcon rockets have changed the field of rocketry mostly because they use vectors, gravity, and power vector control. 
First, the rocket's second stage sends the payload into orbit. At the same time, the first stage, which is now separate, makes a flip move to change its path back to Earth. Small engines, known as cold gas thrusters, make this move possible by giving the ship the thrust it needs to change direction. The rocket uses a few of its engines to halt its descent and reorient it towards the launch site or drone ship. The boost back burn slows the rocket down even more during the return burn, which lowers the stress of entering the atmosphere. The rocket starts its death burn, also known as a hover slam. Now the rocket engines work against Earth's gravity by pointing towards the ground and using thrust vectoring, which lets the spacecraft fall safely. At the very last second, the landing legs extend and the engines slow down to a stop, which allows the plane to land vertically. The F-35B Lightning II is a multi-role, stealth fighter plane that uses cutting-edge technologies to make a powerful war machine. Rolls-Royce's new propulsion system, which combines a lift fan with a swivel section to provide vertical thrust, is a big reason why the F-35B is so stealthy. The Lockheed F-35B aims to supplant the AV-8B Harrier II. The SLS Space Rocket and the SpaceX Falcon rockets now share V-stole thrust vectoring, a trait that allows them to change course while in the air and demonstrates the advancements in airspace technology. This video is over now. I hope you liked it. Subscribe to this channel to make sure you don't miss any of our new videos. Have a nice trip.